Today, we are now in the fourth quarter of our General Physics 2 learning journey. I hope that you were able to complete all your third quarter academic tasks. Let us now keep the ball rolling and start our week one lesson. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you have provided us all, for your protection and love. Thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and solve. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello once again. I am your subject teacher, and here are my contact details if you need it. Feel free to communicate respectfully. Okay. First, let us have the activity entitled, Is the Physicist? The picture is shown in the slide. Who do you think is this physicist? This is your clue. I'll give you five seconds to answer it. Five, four, three, two, one, and so he is Gustav Robert Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff. He is a German physicist who contributed to the fundamental understanding of electrical circuits, spectroscopy. And the emission of black body radiation by heated objects. He coined the term black body radiation in 1862. Several different sets of concepts are named, such as Kirchhoff's laws after him. Concerning such diverse subjects as black body radiation and spectroscopy, electrical circuits, and thermochemistry. Somehow, our lesson for today is related to him. Let's explore more about his concepts. Come on! Our today's lesson is all about combination of resistors and Kirchhoff's law. Are you ready to know more about this topic? Let us learn together. Here are our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to Compute for total resistance, voltage drop, current, and power of resistors connected in series, parallel, and combination. Learn the basic concepts of junction rule and loop rule. Rate questions based on Kirchhoff's laws and appreciate the value of connections. Here are the different terms that you will encounter along the learning journey. We have combination, Kirchhoff, junction rule, and loop rule. What are resistors? Resistors are used in various combinations. There are two methods of arranging the resistors in different combinations. We have resistors in series and resistors in parallel. Let us learn more about this lesson. Let us talk about the combination of resistors. The electric circuit is a group of electrical components that are connected together to form a complete path for current, shown in our illustration. A series circuit contains more than one electrical component connected in a single path. And a parallel circuit, on the other hand, contains two or more electrical components that are across with each other. So the keyword for series is single path and for parallel across each other. Okay. In continuation, according to the Ohm's law, it can be used to determine the equivalent resistance for the series and parallel combinations of resistors. 
for series resistors, the current is equal throughout. For voltage, the total voltage is the sum, sum of all the individual voltage for resistors. And the equivalent resistance is also the sum of the individual resistance of each resistor. For par parallel resistors, the current is the sum of the individual current of all the resistors. And voltage is the same throughout each resistor. And for the equivalent resistance, it is 1 over total resistance equivalent to 1 over resistor 1 plus 1 over resistor 2 plus 1 over resistor 3 and so on and so forth. So please be guided with this table when we are dealing with our problems. Okay. Okay. Now, let us try a sample problem on the set topic, problem rates. Three resistors with values of 60 ohms, 30 ohms, and 20 ohms respectively are connected in series to a 110 volts battery. Draw a circuit diagram and find the A, equivalent resistance of the combined resistors, B, current flowing through each resistor, C, voltage drop across each resistor, and power dissipated by each resistor. Were you able to visualize the said problem? Let us answer it together by scribbling the solving process on your own notebook. Let's go! Okay. As always, we will use the Greca method in solving physics problems. It stands for given, required, equation, complete solution with unit cancellation and answer in sentence form. This will be also your guide in doing your practice exercises later on. Let's digest the problem together. The given we have resistance 1 is 60 ohms, resistance 2 is 30 ohms, resistance 3 is 20 ohms, the total voltage is 110 volts. Required for letter A, we are computing for the total resistance. For letter B, we are computing for the individual current per resistor. For letter C, we are computing for the voltage drop across each resistor. And for letter D, power dissipated by each resistor. For the different equations, we will use the following. Okay, so for the total resistance, it is equivalent to the summation of individual resistance for series connection. For the current, it is voltage divided by the total resistance. For the individual voltage, it is equivalent to current multiplied by the resistance. And for the power, it is equivalent to the product of voltage and uh, electric current. Okay. A. Let us proceed to the complete solution with unit cancellation. For letter A, using the formula total resistance is equivalent to the summation of the individual resistance for series connection, substitute the given values we have. Total resistance is equivalent to resistance 1 as resistance 2 as resistance 3. So, substitute, we have 60 ohms plus 30 ohms plus 20 ohms. So, input in your calculator or do it mentally, the answer is 110 ohms. So, you can use your calculator to check the correct answer. Okay? You get the same? Next, we proceed to letter B. Using the formula for electric current, which is voltage divided by the total resistance, substitute the values. So, the voltage is 110 volts, and total resistance that we computed a while ago is 110 ohms. So, 110 divided by 110 is equivalent to 1. 
So the unit for electric current is ampere. So 1 ampere. Because the resistors are in series connection, individual current per resistor is the same, which is also 1 ampere. Okay. Now we proceed with letter C. Using the formula for voltage drop, which is electric current times resistance, substitute the values per resistor. We have voltage 1 is equivalent to electric current 1 times resistance 1. So we have 1 ampere times 60 ohms, it is 60 volts. So the voltage 1 is 60 volts. For voltage 2, the same process. Electric current 2 times resistance 2, we have 1 ampere times 30 ohms, the answer is 30 volts. So voltage 2 is 30 volts. And for voltage 3, the same process, electric current 3 times resistance 3, we have 1 ampere times 20 ohms, the answer is 20 volts. So this is, it. This is our answer. Okay. Lastly, we proceed to letter D using the formula for power dissipated, which is voltage times electric current. Substitute the volumes per resistor. We have power 1, voltage 1 times electric current 1. We have 60 volts times 1 ampere. The power dissipated by resistor 1 is 60 watts. For Power dissipated by resistor 2, we have voltage 2 times electric current 2, we have 30 volts times 1 ampere. Power dissipated by resistor 2 is 30 watts. Same process with resistor 3, we have power dissipated by resistor 3 is equivalent to voltage 3 times electric current 3. So 20 volts times 1 ampere, the answer is 20 watts. Okay? Did you get the same answers with our computation? If yes, congratulations. For our final answers, we have the following. Equivalent resistance for the combined resistors in series connection is 110 ohms. Current flowing through each resistor is equal, which is 1 ampere, because they are in series connection. For letter C, the voltage drop across each resistor R. For resistor 1, we have the voltage 1 is 60 volts. For resistor 2, voltage 2 is 30 volts. And for resistor 3, the voltage 3 is 20 volts respectively. And lastly, the power dissipated by each resistor R. For resistor 1, the power is 60 watts. For resistor 2, the power is 30 watts. And for resistor 3, the power is 20 watts respectively. Other questions and clarifications, feel free to ask our GCAP during our class time. Okay? okay. Let us try another sample problem on the said topic. Problem reads. Compute for the total resistance of the connection below. Wherein resistor 1 is 5 ohms, resistor 2 is 3.5 ohms, resistor T e is 2.5 ohms, resistor 4 is 4 ohms, and resistor 5 is 6 ohms. Were you able to visualize the said problem? Let us answer it together. Try to scribble the solving process on your notebook. Come on! As always, we will use the Greca method in solving physics problems. It stands for given, required equation, complete solution with unit cancellation and answer in sentence form. This will be also your guide in doing your practice exercises later on. Let's digest the given problem. So we have different resistors, okay, five resistors, and each have a resistance value. 
for resistance 1, 5 ohms, resistance 2, 3.5 ohms, resistance 3, 2.5 ohms, resistance 4, 4 ohms, and resistance 5 is 6 ohms. So we are looking for the total resistance. Equations, we have two, since the electrical connections involve series and parallel connection. So for series connection, the total resistance is equivalent to summation of individual resistors. Resistance of each resistor. For parallel, we have 1 over the total resistance is equivalent to 1 over resistance 1 plus 1 over resistance 2 and so on and so forth. Okay, okay. I will proceed to the complete solution with unit cancellation. Since resistance 2, 3, and 4 are in parallel connection, the total resistance is computed as 1 over resistance 2, 3, 4 is equivalent to 1 over resistance 2 plus 1 over resistance 3 plus 1 over resistance 4. Substituting the given values, we have 1 over 3.5 ohms plus 1 over 2.5 ohms and 1 over 4 ohms. To get the greatest common factor of 3.5, 2.5, and 4, so we just multiply them to get 35 ohms. So then, we divide 35 by 3.5, we got 10. Multiplied by 1, we got 10. 35 divided by 2.5, we got 14 times 1, it's 14 still. And on the other hand, 35 divided by 4, we got 8.75 multiplied by 1, same. We add the following, we got 32.75. Then what we do now is to cross multiply to isolate resistance to 3 and 4. The answer is 35 ohms divided by 32.75, we have 1.07 ohm. So try to analyze the problem and compute in your own calculation. Okay. Lastly, we have following resistance 2, 3, 4, resistance 1, and resistance 5 are in series connection. Therefore, their total resistance is computed as we have resistance 2, 3, 4 plus resistance 1 plus resistance 5. The total resistance is now equivalent to 1.07 ohms plus 5 ohms plus 6 ohms. So the total is 12.07 ohms. So did you get the same answer? If yes, very good. And lastly, there are the total resistance of the connection is 12.07 ohms. Okay, so if there are questions, can clarify it in our class GCAP during our class time. Okay. After this lesson video, you can answer these practice exercises which is also located in our main reference book. The problem reads, three resistors with values of 60 ohms, 30 ohms, and 20 ohms respectively are connected in parallel to a 110 volts battery. Draw a circuit diagram and find the A. Equivalent resistance of the combined resistors B. Current flowing through each resistor C. Voltage drop across each resistor and lastly, power dissipated by each resistor. This problem is similar to sample problem that we had while ago. Enough time will be given for you to answer it in your note. Take note that practice exercises should be written following the Greca method. Please refer to the attached rubric after doing so. You will take a picture of your output and send via SMU LMS the given deadline in your LMM. Feel free to ask difficulties in our PCAP during our class time. I know you can do it. Another practice exercise that you will do for this session is this. Compute for the total resistance the connection shown below.
Okay, so we now proceed to the Kirchhoff's Law. Kirchhoff's first law applies to currents. The junction in a circuit states that a junction, an electrical circuit, the sum of currents flowing into the junction is equal to the sum of currents flowing out of the junction. Let us learn more about Kirchhoff's Law. It is sometimes difficult to determine the current in a complex network by just computing the equivalent resistance. There are circuits containing several loops, with each loop having its own voltage, source, and resistances. German physicist Gustav Kirchhoff formulated two laws that make it possible to find the current in each part of a circuit, no matter how complicated the circuit is. So we have the junction rule or the nodal rule. This is Kirchhoff's first law. The algebraic sum of all the currents entering and leaving a junction must be equal to zero. All current entering the junction are positive and the current leaving the junction are negative. Okay. Next, the second law is a consequence of the conservation of energy. It is known as Kirchhoff's loop rule or Kirchhoff's voltage law. The algebraic sum of all the voltage drops in any loop must be equal to zero. Voltage is negative if it travels from the positive terminal to the negative terminal and vice versa. Versa. The voltage across a resistor is negative if the resistor is traversed in the, in the direction of the current and vice versa. Applying Kirchhoff's first law, junction rule, for junction B, we have current 1 minus current 2 minus current 3 is equal to 0. Take note that current 1 is positive because it is entering junction B. Current 2 and current 3 are negative because they are leaving junction B. For junction C, we have current 2 plus current 3 minus current 1 is equal to 0. Take note that current 2 and current 3 are positive because they are entering junction C, while current 1 is negative because it is leaving junction C. Okay? We have applying Kirchhoff's second law, the loop rule, to the voltage law. We have for letter A, going around loop ABCD in clockwise direction, we have negative I2 R1 as V is equal to 0. 
Take note that current true is negative because it is leaving the function D. R1 is positive and the voltage is positive also because it is from negative to positive terminal. Similarly, for loop EFC, negative I3 R2 plus I2 R1 is equal to 0. Take note that current D is negative because it is leaving function B. We have a positive, positive resistance and we have also positive current 2 because it is entering function C and positive um, resistance which is also equivalent to 0. There are other videos that will be posted in our FP group to sample to explain your job's laws, but you will not solve problems on this topic. Okay? How are you now? Here is a short recap of our learning for this session. Kindly recite it with me. Today, I learned that direct current is a circuit where current flows in one direction. Resistors may be connected in series, parallel, or a combination of series and parallel. Kirchhoff's junction rule states that the algebraic sum of currents entering a junction and the currents leaving must be zero. Also, Kirchhoff's loop rule states that the algebraic sum of the electromotive forces and the voltage drops in any loop must be zero. Are there any clarifications on our lesson for this session? Feel free to ask our GCA. Okay. In connection to our lesson for this session, did you know that Roberto Vera, automation, electronics, and communications engineer, worked in Texas Instruments, an international technology company, he is the first local president of all Texas instruments in the Philippines. He made a lot of contributions in the field of semiconductors and electronics industries in the Philippines. He want also to become an electronics and communications engineer in the future? Why not? So again, as we continue to learn in this new normal, let us be guided with this quote from Steve Buckley saying, If you have positive energy, you will always attract positive outcomes. In relation to our lesson, why is it important to try to remain positive most of the time? You can put your insight in the attendance check of your SMU Blessed account. Let us now have our closing here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Mary, seed of wisdom, pray for us. In the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mode of submission of your outputs you can communicate with me through our FB Messenger or our class GCAP. Submit your practice exercises and other academic requirements in the SMU Bless on time. Feel free to keep in touch always. May Mary, our mother and patroness, inspire you always. God bless and keep safe always. See you in our synchronous meeting. Goodbye!